today I have a totally different episode for you. Um, it was requested to me over email yesterday. And I was like, yeah, I would love to talk about that. <laughs> um, and I then I remembered that a few of you have DM me questions about this topic. And so I said, okay, well, it seems like there's there's an interest here. So selfishly, I would love to talk about this because um, this is kind of like where most of my, I'd say like 90% of my brain is right now. And I find it so much fun. So yeah, uh, let's get let's dive in. Today is going to be about how to start a nutrition business online. And if you're someone who's like, you know what, I'm not really interested in that, totally cool. I mean, maybe you're interested in online businesses, maybe you're interested in being a health coach or a dietitian, or you're just interested that this is for you. Um, but if you're like, hey, I really wanted some nutrition food advice, next week I'm going to be doing a whole episode on Thanksgiving and handling the holidays because I think that's always, you know, it comes up every single year and that'll be fun as well. I'm excited for that one. So today I'm really going to be talking about the advice I would give myself a year ago or five years ago, going down this path of business ownership, online business ownership. So this is a direct conversation with my younger self. Um, so you may or may not resonate with certain points. And uh, to the person who asked me about this question, this is not advice for you in particular. Um, this is just advice to me as a younger person. So I hope it resonates in any way. Let me take a sip of water. Okay, so the question was asked about, um, she had asked me about finances and like logistics. So I'm definitely going to cover finances and logistics of online business ownership today. I'm going to give you the details. And I'm also going to talk to you about kind of thinking about products and services, how I structure my day. And if online business ownership is for you, the pros and the cons, because um, I do have to say, this is something I have been working towards for five and a half years. This has always been my goal. And it was, uh, I would say, very different than what I expected it to be. Um, so many pros, of course, like the, the pros were totally unexpected and the cons were totally unexpected. And I want to shed light on that if you are someone who also wants to start your own business. I also forgot to mention this is great if you just want to start your own business in general. Like, It doesn't have to look like my business. It could be products. It could be in person. Um, so yeah. So a little background. Um, I think it's really first, I think it's really important to understand why you want to start your own business. And that's very general and vague advice. But I had gone through, you know, I grew up watching my parents commute to the office. Um, or my mother, when, she, when I was younger, she worked in an office environment at Motorola. And then my dad left at, I don't know, 6 a.m. every single morning to take the train down to Midtown West. He worked in Manhattan. He came back at 7.30. He ate dinner with us silently, and then he went to work, and he worked almost seven days a week. So my whole thing growing up was like, I will work in this corporate suit environment, and that's just like what I'm supposed to do. And deep down, I just could not fathom that life for myself. I tried it out. I worked first right out of college. I was a consultant for Pepsi and Ben & Jerry's, which is hilarious. Um, I was a product development consultant for them um, at Nielsen. And it was, <laughs> couldn't have been a worse job for me. Um, and so I knew I liked fashion. So then I decided I'm going to be a buyer, go down the buyer path. And I worked at Bloomingdale's um, in shoes and dresses for three and a half years and makeup. And that was still very corporate. I just really, my personality, um, and I think this is why I love to talk about human design and, um, you know, Enneagram and astrology. Like, I think it is so important to know who you are as a person because um, you might thrive in a corporate environment, right? But you need to genuinely know who you are as a person before you start the path of entrepreneurship. Um, because I just, my conditioning was always that corporate roles, like that was my only path. 
even working corporate fashion was like very edgy in my family. And a lot of my illness resulted from being in situations that just weren't core to who I was. So this whole business is my authentic expression of myself. And it's partially why I am healthy today because it is so aligned to who I am. And so I challenge you like to really dive deep into who you are. And that's going to be a lot of people are going to push back like, you know, regardless if you work in a corporate environment or not, people are always going to push their labeling on you. And you have to be so diligent about saying no and stay true to your path. So working in an office is horrible for me. Um, I'm super sensitive. Like I just remember I could sense, like I know when everyone's having a bad day. <laughs> like, And so when you're sitting in like a cubicle environment with like 20 people around you, all I could sense and pick up on was like how many people were so miserable. And then I internalized their pain. That's just who I am. And it was, and then I had to do my own job. And usually it was like work that I didn't, agree with. Like, I just was like, this is waste of time. This is stupid. Like we could be doing this better. The systems were from the 1970s and all of that just like crushed me, like totally weighed me down. Not to mention I lived in Manhattan and I was making like 60,000 a year, which if you live in Manhattan making 60 a year, it's, (laughs) it's not great. I just have to say it doesn't, it really makes life hard for you. My assistant would drop her lunch and she cried because she had no money to go buy lunch that day. Yet you're expected to look a certain way and, you know, buy designer things. Anyway, I'm not getting in that. But basically you need to a really, and this is why I drive at home so much in module two, is like you really need to know who you are and what environment you thrive in. So I always saw myself as someone being like a hybrid person. Um, I always saw myself as I never I always saw myself as a as a mother who also worked like I never saw myself as just a mom. I never saw myself as corporate mom. I always saw myself like like working at from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. and then being a mom from like nine to five and then like, you know, having personal time working on Sundays. I always saw myself in this hybrid model where like I could work at very strange hours or hours that worked for me. And I always, I thrive working at home alone. I'm someone who needs my own schedule. I need to be able to go on a walk when I want to go on a walk. And I really like total silence and just being by myself. Um, Obviously, because I, when I'm with people in a one-on-one setting, I really take them on as as an individual. I really internalize their pain. And in order to internalize that, I literally, this is why I think I thrive in the rural environment is like, I literally have no other distractions. So, and this will all kind of come into play. All of these things I will give you will all sort of make sense as these pieces unfold in today's episode. But I think it's, so that's why like environment, job, all of that aligns. Had I been working in, had I been doing this in Manhattan, Yes, there. I think there are pros to it that I'm missing out on living in Vermont, but I also think there are a lot of cons for my personality. I don't think I would be nearly as successful working in Manhattan with all that stimuli with the environment while also trying to do this. I think I would probably break down a little bit. So, and that's unique to me. You could be the total opposite. Like my mother, she like literally comes to life in, she lives in Manhattan. She walks around like she literally just loves being so stimulated by people and we're like total opposites. And so that works for her. That's amazing. Like she literally is like, I can't imagine. I literally like would want to die living in Vermont. I totally get it. Totally get it. So just really, you need to know yourself inside and out. So living in Vermont also goes back to the finances. So I want to talk about the finances piece and then we'll get into the logistics and all that. So being a business owner, um, you know, you can, there are lots of different risk assessments, right? Like some people think that entrepreneurship is extremely risky. However, you know, you could also turn it on its head and say, well, the first three to five years are very risky, but then the upside is way bigger um, or the stability is way bigger because you are totally in control of your own career path. So I think you can look at it from either way. It really depends. Um, So right now, I live in Vermont. I live in a family condo. 
And, you know, we're moving hopefully in like the spring or the summer to uh, Connecticut, which I'll be around people again, <laughs> which I'm like, I wonder how I'll like that. Um, anyway, so I'm extremely fortunate right now to be living in a family condo because that means I don't pay rent at this time. As a new business owner, not paying rent is a humongous benefit uh, for two reasons. One, um, obviously you don't have to worry, you know, like think about the worry of like, oh, I have to pay rent, right? Whereas that also gives me a ton of money each month to invest in my business. Every single dollar that I make right now is going into my business um, or going into the business in a way that I could see it. Maybe it's intangible. Like I want to buy this brand new red sweater, but let me tell you, when you film a TikTok, you film YouTube with a red sweater, it gets way more engagement than wearing black. I love black, but it gets way more engagement. And so I'm, it, so you can connect things like, okay, well, if I buy the red sweater, I'll get more engagement. I will get more leads. More people will come to my page. So, so there are things that are more intangible like that versus like, okay, um, my ring light broke and I need to go buy a r- more ring light, which is more tangible. So when I lived in Manhattan... Um, I lived in Soho. I lived in Soho Court, which was a great neighborhood. I lived on Houston and Elizabeth. And it was like a from 1970s, like my apartment. I think we paid $4,000 for our one bedroom, totally unrenovated. Like literally, I don't know if they touched it since the 1970s. It was a 200 square foot one bedroom apartment, typical Manhattan. Um, it was fine. It wasn't like spectacular, but it was a great location. So back when I lived there, I would have had to pay $2,000 a month because my husband and I split it. I think now the condo is six or $7,000 a month based on what I've heard from rent prices in New York, which is ridiculous to me. <laughs> so I would have to pay as a small business owner paying $3,000, $4,000 a month every single month. Like that is it. the amount, like you are just like cutting yourself off at the knees by paying that much in rent, when all that money can be fueled into buying skills, buying mentorship, which I'm going to talk about in about 10 minutes, extremely important. So hold that thought. So that's something to consider. Like if you are living in a New York or an LA or an SF, just that it will be a lot harder for you um, and you won't grow and you won't scale as quickly if that's your situation. Um, whereas maybe there is a cheaper area of the city you might be into. Obviously you need to stay safe and you should, your mental health is really important, but it's really something to think about is cost of living. Also living in New York, I spent so much money, you know, eating out and people were kind of, you know, taking cabs. So here my cost of living is very low. Um, yeah, very low. So I'm going to talk about investing the money in this in a second, but Basically, right now, my monthly expenses for this business are under $1,000 per month. And it could be way cheaper than that, but I chose not to. So half of that, actually, my 500 of the 1000 is actually goes towards this, this podcast. So I pay $500 a month to an um, amazing, amazing couple who literally I just give them my podcast and they edit it and upload it. And it's been life-changing for me. So that $500 a month is well worth it. If anyone's interested in starting their own podcast and they don't want to do it themselves, um, reach out to me and I can connect you with them. That They're called Amplify Boutique. Um, and they're incredible. So that I, I spend Kajabi, which is I'm moving from Podia to Kajabi, which is $200 a month. And then like I pay for things like Canva Pro, Grammarly, and like later uh, stuff like that. That's all like 20 bucks a month. So really the most expensive part of my business is running this podcast and then also Kajabi. But that, I mean, you could literally run your Kajabi on like a teachable for like a hundred bucks a month. So you could get it way down lower than a thousand. And plus like a thousand after you scale, I don't imagine my expenses getting that much crazier. Um, I'm really into YouTube right now, but I looked into YouTube and editing one, one of my, I'll tell, tell you about him. One of my gurus spends um, $70,000 per month on professional YouTube editing. So like this is becoming like, you don't just make content anymore. 
like content is becoming like a business expense. Like you need absolutely stellar content if you want to grow. We're going to talk about content in a second. But I looked into YouTube and it was like, okay, $500 to edit per episode. And I was like, I can't do that right now. <laughs> so that's another, you know, but, it, but in the future, $2,000 a month, absolutely I'll pay for that. So yeah. So that's just something to consider. So when you're like, oh, I want to do YouTube and I want to do podcasting and I want to, you know, have beautiful photos for my Instagram, like those are business expenses, like a photo shoot, $3,000. And if, and just rent is like, I think something that is something that's really important. Even if you lived somewhere that's $1,000 cheaper, there's so much you could do with $1,000. So it's really something to think about. I've also spent money. Obviously, I have monthly insurance. That's my bad. So my expenses are actually more like uh, 1200 1300 a month. I have monthly insurance, which is 400 I have a lawyer. So to set up the business, I had a lawyer look over everything, write up a privacy agreement. Um, he's someone that I would reach out to if someone were to sue me. Um, and then hiring an accountant. So those are more sort of like one-off, well, insurance is monthly, but the other two are sort of more one-off things. Um, and I mean, taxation is really interesting. There are a lot of business influencers who will literally spend money like going to the Rosewood in Cabo, and that's like $2,000 a night, and then they expense the trip because that trip actually makes them more money, which is pretty wild. Um, I'm... I mean, <laughs> I could do that with like buying groceries for recipes, but uh, other than that, as a nutritionist, it's very different than being like a business coach. Like that stuff works, but in the nutrition realm, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really tried it, but basically what I'm trying to say is you can tax things, but as a new business owner, I would only tax things that you would buy anyway. That's the short, that's the short word of it. Okay. So back to investing your money. Um, there is an incredible guy I found. If you're a new business owner, please, whatever you do, please listen to this advice. <laughs> I wish I found him years ago. His name is Alex Hormozzi. He is 32 and he has grown and sold four businesses um, to each making a million dollars a month. And he's now worth like 120, 200 million dollars. Um, and he's 32. And he wrote is basically his whole thing is he's going to his YouTube channel, absolutely phenomenal. His book, a hundred million dollar offers is phenomenal. You can buy it for 99 cents. And his whole thing is I want to, and he wanted to make it free, but Amazon wouldn't let him. So his whole thing is like, I will teach you how to make a fabulous business. And once you hit the $10 million mark, I'll invest in you. Because you're like, what's the catch? Why is this guy giving away all this uh, free stuff? His company will invest in you if you just basically utilize his free stuff to grow to $10 million. So then you're like, wow, if this guy is giving away like amazing business advice for free and he thinks you can do it to get you to $10 million, well, clearly I should probably listen to his advice. <laughs> um, and so I read his advice. He's like changed, changed my life and sorry, all these things are like connecting and I'm like, I hope I'm explaining this all right. But basically like money is obviously great, but you only get to that mark of being a, like, a, like a financially successful business owner by creating an offer for your customers that like literally, he calls it a grand slam offer. So it's an offer that is so good. It like literally cures people like like any kind of it's it's easy to implement it's short on time it is priced appropriately it gets people to take action and a grand slam offer at the end of the day of course yes as a business owner i would like to make money of course but you only make money by literally changing people's lives so think about amazon like i hate <laughs> doing errands the fact that i can literally go online and purchase anything within like 20 seconds and it's delivered to my door in two days is literally life-changing. Like that's a life-changing product. The fact that my iPhone allows me to text and FaceTime people and upload to Instagram and I can run my entire business if I wanted from my iPhone, that is a life-changing product. So yes, 
sure, money is sexy and everything, but money is only sexy if you literally change people's lives. So you can't just have a good product. You need to have a mind-blowing Grand Slam offer. And so that's why I recommend his book and his YouTube because he literally gives you tangible, logical steps to create products that change people's lives. And there are certain things you need to think about. And to be honest, it's like I'm trained in nutrition. Sure, I did like fashion, business, like I have an undergrad in business. Not a single thing I'm using for my ad- undergraduate degree is useful to my job now. Maybe like learn- using Excel, but I don't even use Excel. So like you have to understand if you go down this path, 90 to 95% of your day will have nothing to do with nutrition. Um, and that's okay because I think by the time you get to the point of running your own business, like the nutrition is sort of just what you do. And it's also very easy if there's a new article that like a new study to come out, like you know where to look for new studies, you know how to read them very quickly, you know how to implement them very quickly, you know what questions to ask, like, okay, they said to eat um, seaweed oil. So like, what are the implications? What are the pros and cons? How can we add it to a recipe? Are there any downsides? Are there any pros? So like, by the time you're actually giving people nutrition advice, like the nutrition part is so it's easy for you. So it's not like, it's not like a problem. If that was what I'm trying to say, like you, whereas five years ago, most of my day, I was still learning how to do nutrition. So if I had to learn how to do nutrition and learn how to do a business, that's just impossible. You can't do both at once. So, and I'll get to that in a second, but most of my day is about business. So Alex Hormozzi, amazing product. Um, you have to acquire business skills. So Alex Hormozzi has these three things that he says. He says a great entrepreneur, a great business owner has three things. Their skills. Wait, shoot. Skills. Tra- okay, sorry, sorry. Three things. Hold on. Skills, personality traits, and mindset. So you need all three. And if you're missing one of those three, you will never succeed. So for example, mindset is like, I believe that I can um, have an online presence and help people at scale, right? Like, do you actually believe that? Um, A personality trait is like being humble and confident. You know, if you're, if you, if you, if you're not either of those, like you have a huge ego or you're rude to people, bye-bye, you're over. And then skill set, like, can you do copywriting? Can you write triggering marketing messages that will get people to purchase your product? That sounds salesy, but at the end of the day, you want people to purchase their, your product because then you you change and better their li- li- their lives. So like price is very important. If it's priced too low, people aren't going to take you seriously and then they don't buy it and they don't change their life. If it's priced appropriately, they'll be like, ooh, like I actually take her seriously. I actually... I, I, she clearly priced it this way because it's a life-changing offer. So I'm going to take it seriously. I'm going to buy it and I'm going to implement the advice. It's crazy. They've found that people, the more you charge for a product, the more people take it seriously and the more people change their life. Because I've had a lot of people who have poor money mindset who are like, I can't believe you would charge that. I can't believe you would make a course that price. But I've also sold a lot of cheaper things and people are like, oh, it's like the cost of a soul cycle. It's a cost of a dinner out. Like, I don't really care. I'm not really going to take it seriously. So is it better to charge the lower price to people who then never take it seriously? Or is it better to price it appropriately and people actually take it seriously and then they actually change their life? I, I, I would think that charging the right price is the right, is the right idea because then people change their life. Isn't that what we want? We want people to change their life. We want people to feel better. These are things they don't teach you <laughs> in your nutrition programs, okay? So basically, you have skills, traits, and mindsets. Now, you can go online and you can watch as many free YouTube videos as you want, which is what I do in my free time. When I'm walking my dog, when I'm cooking dinner, I'm constantly consuming things that will improve my skills, traits, and mindsets. But like anything in life, I could take a whole year to learn about copywriting through free YouTube videos and piece it together myself. Or I could spend $2,000 on a copywriting class, learn it a month, and then change my business in a month rather than change my business in a year. So money is a vehicle to buy back time. Money is a vehicle to buy us skills, traits, and mindsets. Money literally buys us our future self. And when you see it that way, it's not like, oh, you know, um, I, I mean, it's very easy for me to get caught in this trap. I love fashion. 
um, you know, you could go spend $500 on some, you know, ridiculous on trend piece of clothing. I would love to do that. Or you could take that $500 and, and invest in you. He calls it, he calls Alex Ramos, he calls it the S in, the S in me, you know, like the S and P 500. He's like, don't invest. I mean, obviously you can invest in the S and P 500 and that's a good thing, but he's like, invest in S and me because the more you invest in yourself, the more your baseline skills increase and then the more successful you are in your business and that's actually going to help more people and drive revenue back. So you need to be like the health of your business and the strength of your business correlates to how healthy and strong you are as a person. And that's also, I think, a good, you know, if you're someone who's kind of struggling in your health and you also want to be an entrepreneur, you really have to nail the health piece before you can really ever become an entrepreneur because you just, you can't have, your mind can't be split in two different places. Like you you need, you really need to be focused and go all in in this one area. So that's a great motivation if you're like, well, I want that one day. You got to master the nutrition, master the lifestyle piece, and that will allow you to be a really good business owner because all these things are interconnected. So all of my money, and that's why I was kind of making such a big thing about not paying rent, like all of my money is going into buying back skills. Every every dollar I have, it's going back into skill set, traits, and mindset. So for example, I've spent at least $15,000 on online courses and um, I am. I have one one-on-one meeting with a wonderful business coach. I've admired her for years for two thousand dollars for one session with her, ninety minutes, and she's going to help me strategize and think through, you know, things that I might be doing wrong or things, areas of opportunity I can't see. Because, like, yes, I'm constantly asking for advice from you. I'm constantly saying, like, what can I do? What can I do? But and that's extremely helpful. You need to constantly get advice from the people around you or like feedback. But then there's also just like structuring things business wise that I'm like a baby, a blind baby. Like I I need a professional to tell me what the best is. And when I make the best products, I give you the best experience. So I've spent $15,000 on how to structure a course to make it as successful as possible for you. Um, I'm actually currently updating it to make it even more to the point. I needed to make it more to the point and more succinct and more um, quicker for you to get through. So I'm doing that right now. I've invested in social media strategy. I've invested in um, launching a product, email marketing, and business development. So any skill set that I think I need, and also mindset, like put it, like my my vibe and my energy. So I have invested in all those things and I will continue to invest. And actually my business coach that I hired, um, her name's Allie Reeves and she's a, seems like a gem of a human being. I've, I've bought many things from her and her coach costs $30,000 a year. So I'm like, oh, I'm getting the $30,000 a year stuff at, the, at a discount. Like that's pretty awesome. Uh, so that's how I, how I look at it. So these things, you know, and that's because their techniques are so advanced and you know, I want to get exposure to that, right? So that's how I think about it. And so I think if, you know, if you're a new business owner who's like, oh yeah, I'll make some cash on the side or like, it's it's really, I don't think that you will really reap the rewards of your profits until like five years down the line because everything should be going into making it like the most seamless, incredible customer experience that you can offer. This guy, Alex Formosi, I said, who has the free book that you absolutely have to buy. <laughs> um, he, and you're probably like, why are you spending $2,000 in a coach? Well, I think I like to have her personal perspective. She's a woman. She's has similar vibe as me, whereas Alex is a dude. And, um, you know, we have different personality traits, but he's in the fitness, was in the fitness world. So very, very tangible book for me. But I liked, I like both. Like I like to get different perspectives from different areas and kind of combine them, right? Like we all take little nuggets from people. Um, so as I was saying, yeah, so I'm, I'm really investing all in. Um, Alex, oh, Alex Ramosi, the guy who's worth like a hundred million something plus, he started as a gym owner. He had five different gyms and then he went into 
creating a product where it was basically like how to 3x your gym revenue. And he had a whole system and then he sold it to hundreds of gyms around the US at a premium. And so that's kind of was his first business. But his, well, his first first business, which is being a gym owner, he ate ramen noodles every night and he literally slept on the ground of his gym for a year. And I think like we all see entrepreneurship as like, oh, it's so sexy. Like you post on Instagram and sure, um, that's like 2% of it. <laughs> but like you really know I'm not going to be eating ramen because my my health and livelihood depends on really good food. Um, but we can all take that mentality of like, you really have to scrutinize every dollar that comes into your bank account and where it's going. So just taking that mentality with you. And then once you do have enough money, for example, um, I do a bunch of different tasks every day. And I, it's, it, when you first get started, you have to do everything. And I, the first place, the first thing I'm going to do when I get to a certain income goal that I feel is right is I'm going to hire a full-time VA because then that person will do a lot of like the back end stuff. Like I need to copy my people from Podia to Kajabi and I have to put the HTML code in and then I have to watch like seven hours of educational video on like why my HTML code went wrong and like my website isn't showing the right way, right? Like <laughs> like really gnarly stuff like that. Or I spent half a day the other day, I like was researching a marble table for more beautiful food photography shots. I finally bought it, it arrived cracked, and then I had to kind of return it. I had to drive all the way to the post office, which is like 20 minutes from here, return it, um, buy a new one, like and that's like four hours of my day is lost. So it's like all these little things add up. And when you have a VA, which costs money, you have to have, I would like that person to do that so that I can actually create more YouTube content, like more, like I would, I'm dying to create a YouTube channel. I just don't have the time. I would love to create a YouTube channel for more free content. I would love to um, work on perfecting new products, you know, so these little things of like hiring a marble slab, it takes time away and it also takes money. So a VA is the first person I would hire. And then I would love to hire someone to do um, YouTube editing because YouTube editing these days is like a legitimate sport. Um, and like I said, Alex Hormozzi, he pays $70,000 a month, a month. So a year, that's $800,000 a year, $900,000 a year, almost a million dollars a year he spends on YouTube. So just think about that. Um, and that goes back to like, you know, hours, right? Someone asked about hours and how I structure my day. And I think there's no right answer. And I think that's the beauty of this job is that like you can make it whatever you want. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mr. Beast, but Mr. Beast is like the best, I think the biggest YouTube star right now. And he literally, they're like, what's your day like? And he's like, I literally wake up. I think about YouTube for like 19 hours straight. I'm obsessed with it. And I do that for like three weeks on end until I literally burn out and I sleep in my bed for two days. And then I get up and I just do it again. And I actually do think like, I'm definitely not like that. Um, just because, you know, my health is really important to me. So I, my health comes first and then my business. So like, I would never work 19 hours a day for my business because then it ruins my health and then that ruins my business. You know, like I, <laughs> it doesn't work for me, but for other people that works cool. Good for them. I think that's very admirable. Um, so, but when you do run your own business, like people are constantly DMing you, constantly emailing you. And yes, you want to have that boundary. Like it's like, okay, it's my weekend. I just need, I need some time. I just, I just need some time away from my phone, my laptop, but people don't, they expect you to be constantly communicating with them. Otherwise it's like, well, you know, maybe I don't like Becky so much. So it's this 20, it is 24 seven. And I, I do have some boundaries in place to help me mentally, but like I've tried to take Saturday and Sunday off, but then usually by Sunday, I'm so anxious by how much I have to do that. I, I usually work Sundays too. I've, I've tried both. I've tried taking the weekend off. I've tried neither is optimal. I have to say there's, pro, there's cons to both. Um, but it's just, it's endless. It's endless and endless, endless stuff that you have to do. Um, 
So I would say 90% of my day, because I said like the logistics and the structure of my day was a question. So 90% 90 of my day is business related. It's marketing, writing, creative, finances, admin. And then 10% of my day is, I would say, like, maybe uh, nutrition related or working with clients in a one-on-one capacity. Um, thankfully, my main revenue is through online channels. So, and I want that to be as best as I can be. And that goes back to my original goal, with it, which is the hybrid, um, because I want to be a working mom who can work on my own schedule. And so, but not only that, I believe, deeply believe in the power of the online business industry. It's exactly how I healed myself. I did not heal myself through one-on-one calls with people. They're really expensive and they're wildly inefficient compared to other metrics. I've been to multiple dietitians. I saw them for two or three times. You're spending $1,000 with them for very little information. Whereas the way I healed, I healed through um, podcasts, I healed through books, I healed through a um, nutrition degree, which was basically three hours a day for two years straight of nutrition facts coming through my brain, right? And then I learned through my Monash University training. So I never learned through, I'm just being honest, I never learned through a one-on-one environment, and that's why I think that the art and science, if you do the art and science, which I've, if I were to teach what's in the art and science through a one-on-one model, it would cost you like $7,000. <laughs> so the art and science is an amazing price from my perspective um, for how much you get. I think it's awesome adding a one-on-one to that because it's like the art and science should get you to 90%. And then you have the one-on-one, which is like, you know, tweaking it to you. Beautiful. But I think the one-on-one model fundamentally is broken. However, we have been trained as dietitians, like, do you have your private practice set up? And like, are you doing one-on-ones? And you're going to bill it to, you know, Medicare or whatever. And I just, I fundamentally, from the core of my heart, think it's a false and broken system. And, but that's hard because what happens, so like, let's say you're someone who has a product, you have to really believe in your product. You will get a lot of people who are think you are crazy. You need to take the advice and listen to people, right? Like people that you genuinely care about, your avatar, your ideal customer. You have to listen to them. You have to take their advice because they will make you better. They will make your product better. They see things that maybe you didn't see. You have to take their advice and you have to be humble and ask for advice. Um, But then there are people who are just never going to buy your product. They don't believe in what you're doing and they're just going to say mean things to you and you got to block those people out. And so the hard part is seeing like really, really putting them into two different buckets because it's really bad to take advice from people who would never buy from you or aren't interested in you. And it's also really bad to not listen to the people who are giving you feedback. So The reason I'm saying that is that like I had been pressured by a lot of people or a lot of people ask me, they say, please, I need a one-on-one, I need a one-on-one and I want to help people. And I'm like, okay, okay, sure, I'll I'll give you my one-on-ones. And then I'm always like, damn, why did I do that? Because I just, the price value to me does not match. I'm like, for what you have to pay, because it's a lot of energy, it's a lot of Usually the it's like before and after the amount of energy I have to give into it. It's not just that session, but it's the hours before and after. Um, the amount I have to give in such a short time period, and then it's never enough for you to really change your life. And so I keep trying to get rid of them. And so I'm 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 getting I <laughs> I can't say that for sure, but I'm really trying to stick to my belief, which is making the best IBS nutrition course available in not only the United States, but worldwide for English speakers. Be very cool to do different languages one day, but that's so, if that's my goal, you really can't be distracted by all these other cool little things like creating a YouTube channel. I'd love to create a YouTube channel, but like my, I have my podcast and we'll talk about that in a second. All of my energy needs to be into like 
hiring people who are masters at creating the best experience for online education, because that's what I believe in. That's my fundamental belief. So that's where most of my energy goes. And creating an online product, it's not just like, okay, I dump my knowledge and put it in. Like You have to be a really excellent writer. You have to be really great with creative. You have to make it very easy and simple for them to succeed. And like something that Alex Hormozzi taught me is that someone will not buy from you because you didn't list one of their 64 problems. Very similar to healing IBS. So like if you have 64 problems, like think about 64 problems you have with your IBS. It's like, I can't button my pants. Um, I'm afraid to eat out. If I only list 63 of those on my sales page, you might not buy because the 64th one that was so important to you didn't resonate with you, even if it's inside the course, even if like I have a whole grocery list for you, you're like, oh, she doesn't have a grocery list, so I'm not going to buy. So those are the things that you you need to invest in your business education. And it's just crazy. I mean, I haven't even, I it, the amount out there that I don't even know of is insane. So that's where all my energy goes to is really perfecting those things. And um, I love it. Like I love that. I love just how much I love to learn. So I love to learn random things and put it all together. So if that's something that you would enjoy, awesome. Um, I was going to say something. I got thrown off. Where was I going with this? Oh, so structuring my day. I'm really trying my best to, you need to pick, like structure your day around like your main task. And when you first start out, you're going to be kind of pulled in many different directions. Um, but really there's only kind of like three main areas, I would say. So there is, um, generating leads. So generating new customers into your world or nurturing current customers. So that is through short and long form content. You do need, you know, some people say pick one platform and be the best at it, which I agree with, or in my opinion that, but you also need both short and long form content. Short form is great for like, you know, quick little things like, oh, recipe, yay. But where people will really get to know you and really trust you is through long form content. So that could either be a newsletter, it could be YouTube, or it could be podcasting. Choose one. I say choose the one that sounds most fun for you. That's it. (laughs) That's my only advice. And then short. So right now I'm actually going really heavy in podcasting and Instagram. Um, at some point I'll get back into TikTok, but I had to take a break from it. So short and long, and you got to master it. (laughs) Then you need to focus on your offer, which is your product or service and just make one thing and be the best at that. So right now for me, it's really the art and science and mentorship. I had offered the formula, which was amazing, but really just narrowing in on my products um, and then support. So support is going to be operations, logistics, et cetera. The art, I said the art and science because the art and science is launching again around Thanksgiving. And I'm super, super excited because um, I've implemented so many new learnings that will be integrated into the, into the product. So it's really top of mind for me right now is the art and science. And then the last thing is just like support. So it's just like logistics, operations, um, tech support, email, stuff like that. Um, So how do I structure my day? Um, Let's see. And I only have two minutes left. This always happens to me. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I would say you should structure your day however you want. Um, I would say that for me, my core needs are good sleep, exercise, and eating well. So those are always priority. They're always built into my day. And then I just work around those. Um, so I think it really depends. Some days I wake up at 6 a.m. Some days I wake up at 7.30. Um, some days I finish work before dinner time. Sometimes I finish work around 7.30. Uh, I think it really depends on kind of your day. And um, yeah, I but I'm definitely not like nine to five structure. And I'd say some days are more creative. Some days are more course related. Some days, you know, I'd say I have different themes around things because there's so many different things to focus on. It's easier for me to just like really narrow in on one, th- one theme each day. Um, so some pros and cons. I think that being an online business owner is the ultimate self-growth <laughs> um, vehicle. I'd say it's, I think I said this in my, in a few, an episode 
um, a month or two ago, but I'd say it's the third hardest thing I've ever done from a growth perspective. The first hardest thing was my first boyfriend. (laughs) The second hardest thing I've ever done was healing my IBS. And I'd say the third hardest thing I've ever done is this business because it's, there's so much to learn and you need to be totally okay with realizing how little you know. And that can kind of feel like constant failure. Like I've been posting on Instagram for five years. You're going to start posting on Instagram and no one's going to like your stuff. And you have to have the strength and the courage to say like, I'm not a horrible human being. I just need to learn copywriting. I just need to learn photo editing. I need to learn more about posting at better times. Like I need to learn more about um, the pillars of social media. You really need to look at it from a, um, a growth opportunity instead of saying like, I'm a flawed human being because that's not true. Um, and I think EMDR therapy really helped me with that because you, you genuinely have to say like, I'm, I'm good. And these are things I can learn. These are skills, traits, and mindsets I can learn and, 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 and buy to learn. So you have to really be okay with that. You have to love self growth. Um, there's this famous saying that if you look back at like the Instagram posts or the podcasts that you posted a year ago, you should cringe at yourself, which is true. Um, you should be someone who loves the unknown and someone who loves just like loves solving problems and loves, yeah, loves solving problems in the unknown. Um, a con is that you do have to deal with people misunderstanding you, um, or calling you mean names. I had someone who threatened me and looked at my address and started, um, saying horrible things about my family members. Um, so you have to be open to things like that, but they do go away. I mean, so far they have, but who knows? Um, it, it's not for you if you want a clear path. <laughs> if you're like, okay, when I do this, I get this because that's never, never proven. And um, you have to be okay with like cutting back on your expenses and living kind of a frugal life um, and putting all of your money into your business if you really want it to succeed. So that's kind of what I would say there. I wanted to say one more thing. What did I say? And I think the reason for me, it was so hard. I say it's the third hardest thing I've been is that I just, this is what I want to say. And then I'll, I'll leave the end episode on this is that entrepreneurship for me was actually so difficult at first because my idea of it in my head was so different than what it actually was. So I thought like you see it and you're like, oh, it's so glamorous. She has a podcast and she's on TikTok. And like that is like 2% of it. <laughs> and so you can't get high off of that 2%, right? It's, it's just not sustainable where you get high, you know, like high off your own supply. You get high from genuinely two, two places. One is genuinely being in service to other people. I think if you are in this purely as a selfish, like, oh, I want to be a social media star, like it's never going to last. You have to have such a mission so deep, like that you feel like I'm put on this planet to share this message. Even if I, you know, I love clothes, I would love to, you know, make my own clothing line. Like, that's great. But my message deep down is this message of chronic illness and IBS, because you're going to get attacked on the internet by a a troll. Um, Your software is going to fail you. And you're going to be like, why did I do this? Like, why is this worth it? And you have to keep going back to that message because the good days are incredible. They're the best days, some of the best days of my life, but the bad days are, can be really bad. (laughs) And you have to have that message. And It is on the second thing is it is if you are a creative person who loves either whether it's a visual creative, writing creative, talking creative, um, brand building, like it's so fun. It's the funnest thing I've ever done. Um, But again, it has to be linked to service. So if you're making a creative product like purely selfishly for yourself, not going to work. But if you're if you're meshing like your creative gifts with a true deep desire for service, and you understand like the circle of completion, which is like everything I do is into this product that will change people's lives. And in return, I get money back because 
I've given so much. It's all about giving. So what comes back to you is a magnitude of how much you've given to people. And I just, I didn't understand any of this. I just was like, oh yeah, I had this idea. And I think, I think I, it's going to work. And it's, there's just so much that goes into it. Mindset, random skills, like, oh great. I have to be a master of copywriting now. I had no idea. I have to be a master at Kajabi now. I didn't know that. So you have to be really okay with all that. But so far, it's one of the best decisions I've made <laughs> besides all of that. So that was um, how to start a nutrition business online 101. Um, if you'd like a second episode, if you have more questions, let me know. But I had a wonderful time talking about it. I think it's so much fun. It's really, really so much fun. Um, okay, guys, I'm so excited to talk to you next week about Thanksgiving. I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you have a fabulous week. And I'll talk to you next week. Okay, bye-bye.